Hey fellas, I can tell how that I definitely had a very nice Christmas, I mean, that is the meme, and I'll definitely be getting into some of the other bits in a collection update, made before the year is out, out, I mean, I'm definitely going to have to do a lot, I, this is one of many videos I'm working on at the same time, and planning to help close out this year, so I hope we work for 2020, but first and foremost, Here's the big one. I was hoping to do the Sega Genesis Mini for the 30th anniversary of the console and in the process as I unbox this, share some of my favorite Sega memories and while I normally wouldn't be talking about the package like I did with the Nest Mr. Star of the Year, like exception gonna have like even down to the recreation of the pack and some of the hedgehog, the original one I can tell on my shirt and some of my Sega socks here. I mean, I definitely may have a lot of fitting for the system, and even though they have every game I was expecting on there, it's got the first two ones, as well as uh, spin offs such as Spinball and Dr. Box Me B Machine, a version of the Puyo Puyo series. Definitely a nice little bit of variety there, here, even with that series alone. So, I'll get into details from the other games and talk about more of my other memories with this system. All right, continuing along, we've got. Uh, it's I mean, some of our bonuses, World of Illusion, as well as Castle of Illusion, so Mickey Mouse, some very fun Disney games. The original Echo the Dolphin, even though I like the sequel, Ties of Time better, it's still a, you know, a creative, unique game where you actually have to think like a dolphin in order to play through it. You actually have to use your echolocation to find information on how to close certain objectives and puzzles. And one couple of thousand surprises, Darius, as well as the Sega version of Tetris, which is actually hard to find. As I was saying, just that version by itself, I mean... No, just the cartridge, no box, no manual, no nothing. Can fetch quite a bit of price online. I mean, not going in any particular order, just giving my thoughts. Like, some things I haven't played yet, others I've played yet, but ones I have, like Road Rash 2, who is actually my favorite of the Road Rash games, which, in many ways, the whole riding a fast motorcycle while attacking other racers with chains and belly clubs, hubs where. There's stuff like conditioning for the kind of insanity you can get into in GTA. We also have some other artifacts before Sonic became a console's icon with Alex Kidd and Shannon Castle, which had their previous mascots. Uh, it's actually pretty fun. Alter Beast has aged, but I can't help but appreciate the, uh, the campiness of the digitized rise from your grave. Turning in like a bear, a dragon, and a wolf, among other creatures. I mean, I mean, a lot of good slasher RPGs, such as as Beyond Oasis, as Fantasy, A Star Four, Monster World Four. I have not played that one as much yet, but might be interesting. I mean, and also we have Shining Force. Whereas we've got not all sorts of uh, I definitely like the variety of this console, like the Wonder Boy and Monster World. Oh, definitely looking forward to playing that one. Uh, it's got my kind of hard to tell with that one, but could that be any less? As eighties or early nineties, like the whole whole dressing up to fight monsters and a headband. Green pants, knee pads, and red sneakers, I mean. And like Toe Jam and Earl. Oh, I think that's the original one. And the first two are fun. The third one I had on Xbox was kind of weird. I mean, I just put out another one. One that's more like the first one I had not played it yet. I mean, I mean, it's just seeing like how the world is just randomly generated every time you played it. It was kind of like, like a unconventional kind of roguelike, and that's definitely a pretty unique to find out. 
Of course, no consoles complete. Hey, without some offerings from other developers to balance out your own material. In which case, we got plenty here as well. Castlevania Bloodlines. Well, Super Castlevania 4 may be the pinnacle of 16 minute entry. So this was also another her great entry in the Castlevania series. Here we have Mega Man and the Wily Wars. Here's Genesis as equivalent to Mega Man, Alan version Mega Man. And of course, we have, have Street Fighter 2, who who official championship edition, which despite being technically about the same as is the Senesis Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. It'll still prove to be pretty popular given how it was another home port Street Fighter 2 release that highlights its popularity, especially that entry's popularity, where each one had its own. It may not be my favorite Capcom franchise, but I understand its significance. One thing I do like, however, Strider. It's an awesome game, and very rare how this console made use of its arcade influence to craft a version that actually ran, at the time, closest to get the arcade version as you could, I mean, right, I mean, and in the case where they didn't, like Virtual Fighter 2, obviously the Genesis could not do 3D models on its own, it went a different way, which actually proved to be a pretty interesting 2D fighter, here that could run the Genesis space hardware, here, and still have the same kind of complex, surprisingly complex gameplay you found in the arcade version as well. I have that one down on my PS3, but I still think it's actually one of the more underrated titles on there. Okay. On top of also having some interesting experiments such as Kid Chameleon, and, and what else we got? Dynamite Heady is also a pretty fun game. I also had ones that I met some of my favorite ones on the system like Golden Axe. My favorite character is the dwarf on that one. And especially Gunstar Heroes, I mean. A little fun fact, apparently when this was being localized in English, I just had to go through Europe before it came stateside. It was originally going to be called Lunatic Gunstar, but they took offense to the word Lunatic there and so it was changed, I mean. I mean, Space Harrier 2, another fun on arcade port. Alright, I mean, Super Fantasy Zone. I have not played that one as much, but it looks fun, I mean. Actually, I think that might be one of the first times that game has been officially released. And even though I my favorite, uh, if it's Oak Street Rage, the first one, as well as Shinobi's Revenge Shinobi, I gotta agree that, including Shinobi 3 and Twitch Rage 2, what good calls represent those series, man. If Street Rage 4 does well, I would not have any objections to bringing back Shinobi and Golden Axe on those lines. Like, let's make them direct sequels to the original games that ignore the events of previous attempts, like how Beast Rider was not very good. It was basically had less to do with the original trilogy and more like an attempt to ride God of War's coattails, which went about as well as you'd expect. As in not at all. And Vector Man is a is a pretty fun one where you're playing as a a pi uh, the title character who is shipping toxic waste off planet, whereas humanity has escaped hit all a polluted earth in year twenty forty nine, with leaving robots to clean up the mess while they're away. Hey and also having one robot attached a weapon to a service turning into a WMD, which to be fair isn't really much a stretch anymore. I mean, make your own assumptions there. And also we've got Thunder Force which is actually pretty fun on a helicopter or shoot 'em up. And Last, last but not least, we have the puzzle game Columns, pretty addictive, and Contra Hardcore, one of my favorite installments of the series. I mean, I mean, Rogue Core was pretty bad. I mean, 
And I mean, I don't mind the content within reason. I mean, it's a shame. Plus, I like pandas and I don't understand the logistics behind that because I don't really play that when they can just play hey, this, I mean, or Fortnite or PUBG or or Apex Legends, or heck, even Splatoon 2 or Battlefront 2, I mean, but, okay, I think now that I've gotten through all this rambling, I might as well see what's in the box. Alright, now let's officially open this bad boy up and see what's, how we all what we got here, which will have everything we would need to play, hey, these games, Games on your modern TV. It is physically possible, but apparently there's things like latency and inputs sometimes I have a trouble. And first and foremost would be hey, the console itself, which is a scale hill of the actual original Genesis. And holy, hey, Toledo, it's a pretty impressive little little kit there. I also like how the attention to detail, the original design, the on-off switch, pitch, the volume control, and the reset button right here. Here, I mean, definitely shows how, after the previous toy made by this company didn't do so hot, I'm really glad that Sega took the reins themselves, given how this is still their most recognized successful console. And we have our power supply right here. Here, which here we have the HDMI cable. You need to hook up to your monitor. Here. And another little bit, we've got not the power supply itself. I mean, so of this the cable. Another important little piece of tech. And so this plugs into the power supply and this other end here will be plugging into the console. Oh, like so. This is the DC in out. Out the direct current. Actually a lot simpler than the old red yellow and white ones hands used to have I mean which worked fine if your TV had them or just had those inputs like sometimes the monitor I've used for 64 just has the yellow and white inputs just so you had to use those and now we have one of the controllers there are two of them in the package for multiplayer and just that sound is great just like the old days and this is your first one, and they plug in with USB. So if you wanted to do this on another setup, you could, could do so. They even have fight pads for playing Street Fighter here. And, and you have the other game pad here. So, and this is just, it's like, Another big memory I have for the system, like the original one, um, that's seen a bit of mileage, but I still have it, is last like with Star Wars. When I mentioned my review of that game, of that series, of that movie. Twenty-two years is this month is when I got my first one of the real deal. So one of the things I'm probably leaving you with is I'm going to hook this up and relive. I have some memories with one of my favorite systems ever because that's definitely what I'm going to be leaving you with the impression of. <laughs> I know there'll be a detail there. It's actually, actually has a little slot there just to plug in little teeny cards if they ever wanted anything that would sense. So. 30th anniversary, Genesis does. <laughs>